everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way and stitch and sew with me or just come and chit chat. Uh, we just, just have fun and hang out. <laughs> it's a nice evening. So tonight we are going to continue the short little project that we did, that we started on Friday. We are going to continue stitching one of my new embroidery kits here. So we just got started. We transferred the design and uh, got some colors started and we're going to continue on this. I think, uh, uh, maybe tonight and one more night and we'll probably have this feller done. Uh, so these, this is a new kit. It's a new um, kit from a series of kits that I'm doing uh, with, with like little text, text sayings in it. Uh, and it's that small, it's a little four inch hoop size. Um, I do not have them in my website yet. So uh, be sure to sign up for my email newsletter. Uh, I think I have a link below here. You can do that at penguinandfish.com and I will let you know when they're available. And I think I might do a little special on them coming up. I have a little idea for that. So uh, we're just kind of jumping ahead with it right now. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys informed about when it will be available. And I think I'll have a cute little bundle for it. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get stitching tonight. So nice to see everyone again uh, from the weekend. All right. Flip. Okay, guys, so here we are, getting situated here. Okay, so this is how far we got on Friday. And uh, uh, we did quite a bit already. So uh, we started with the green and then we did a whole pile of cute little lazy daisy stitches uh, and then uh, uh, ended it there. So, Here's, here's what it'll look like when it's done. So I think let's continue with the, these lazy daisy stitches. We don't have much more to do. We'll start there and then hit maybe some of these little French knots, these little pink guys. And if we have enough thread left, we'll start uh, those little butterfly, butterfly wings. And then, you know, we'll see what we got left going on here. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to, here's the thread. I'm going to just kind of take both the pink and the green again. And I like getting about yeah, 18 to 24 inches or so. I definitely don't go over that. Otherwise it's too far for me to pull my arm when I'm stitching. All right, I wanna do pink. All right, so I'm doing three strands of floss for mine. Uh, that's, that's what it is on the cover here too, is three strands. And uh, uh, that's my typical go-to number of strands, just because I like the thickness of it. Um, feel free to use uh, whatever number of stitches you want. <laughs> In fact, we made a... Uh, let, let me grab it here quick. Oops, sorry. Bumped you guys a hair here. But we made that uh, stitch, stitch and color guide here. So here you can see the different amount of strands, the different in the thickness. I, my typical go-to is the three, so I'm kind of like a middle thickness, but if you want it thinner, more delicate, feel free to do two or one strands. Um, if you want it like fatter and heftier, um, you know, five, six strands up here, I like the three strands. Yes, Gretchen, this is a new kit. Uh, it is not available quite yet. Uh, it will be very soon though. I'm hoping to work on it a little bit this week. So. Um, Let's just get the three strands out of here. So keep your eyes on your email. Uh, I will be sure to send some stuff out about it. Uh, I have a little idea for it that might be kind of fun. We talked about it a little bit on Friday. So uh, keep your eyes open. Still working on it. I just, what happened is I just really wanted to embroider on Friday and I had these around. I was gonna take some photos of them and I'm like, oh man, you know, I just want to embroider. I just wanna chill and start a cute little just simple embroidery. 
And so I, I uh, got this out. So it might be a little premature because I, I don't have it out or available yet. So you guys are definitely the first, the first to see it. Um, but it'll be coming very soon. Uh, maybe even before we finish stitching it. Oh, and you guys, there's another one too. So here is the other one of the series, uh, Play, Create, Do. And it's got a little bow and ribbon and a little birdie on it. And it kind of goes with our craft, a happy life one. So I'm, I'm just, this one's available right now, but I'm just kind of extending, extending um, those little cute kits a little bit. So I'm hoping to have a little bundle of those soon with a little extra fun thing that I think will be fun to do here. Um, so we'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know about that. I gotta figure it all out yet. And, uh, but yeah, I think it'll be kind of fun. So I'm gonna just get this guy in the hoop again. This is just a little bamboo four inch hoop. And all this came with the kit. Um, we, we started this on Friday. So if you missed that, there we do have a video of it on uh, Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. So all, all my videos kind of, all the replays of these videos live there. Tighten this guy up. Oh, Gretchen! Gretchen says that her Craft a Happy Life embroidery kit is the first thing she sees in her office. That's awesome. I freaking love that. Good reminders. They're, they're good reminders. Sometimes you just need to see that. All right, so here is, this is three strands. Yep, I already got my three strands here. Oh, no, only that's funny. Those icons look just like this, don't they? I got to see Chad Kitty uh, this weekend. And my mom and dad and brother, too. <laughs> uh, we went and visited um, my family this, this weekend. So we drove to Wisconsin and uh, just hung out outside. It was so beautiful. It actually rained a little bit, but, like, the air was just fresh and crisp and beautiful. And uh, it was just a nice, you know, it was a short weekend, but it was still just super kind of refreshing and nice. And we drove back today. Um, and we drove back and it is almost 90 degrees here and humid. Oh my gosh. I kept getting warmer and warmer in the car. I'm like, oh my God, get this. I, I thought it was just because the sun was shining on me uh, driving on my side of the car. But uh, it was 88 degrees according to the car. Ah, so, so much for that, like, beautiful fall weather. It's <laughs> uh, switched back to summer, and I think it's going to be like that all week, um, is what I hear. But for a moment there, it was beautiful and fall and just nice. <laughs> we hung out outside almost the whole time, and um, Chad Kitty was so funny. Uh, <laughs> it is just a goofy cat. So it's an outdoor cat, basically. It lives outdoors. It thrives outdoors. But it will go into people mode, right? I don't know if you guys ever had a cat like this. So it, it, it's in cat mode most of the time where it's just like twitchy and hunty, like looking for stuff. And But when it goes, when it sees, when it sees a person, so... It's like, okay, I'm done with kitty mode, and I am going to go over to that person, and I'm going to, you know, like, just say hi to this person. First of all, it, um, Chad has to stretch, so <laughs> when you see him, the first thing he does when he transitions from cat mode to human mode is he stretches <laughs> like he does like a downward dog, and then he's ready to come over to you. Uh, so he does that. And uh, it's so funny because he's so kind of like wild, but he likes sitting in laps and no one taught him how to do that or anything. Like no one like lifted him into the lap to be like, hey, laps are nice places to be. He just decides, oh, there is a flat surface there that looks nice. Um, uh, I'm deeming you worthy of my presence by me sitting in your lap. So <laughs> he'll crawl up on your lap and he it was just so funny the other day 
I, I was, it was, I was sitting on the steps, so my legs were like down a level on the steps, so it would be kind of in an L shape, so it wasn't like a perfect cross-legged um, lap. It was an L-shaped lap, but he went there anyway, and he wanted to lay on his back on my lap, which is weird. But then he just hung his head down, so he's like backward bending and kind of slipping out of my lap, and I don't know, half asleep. And every once in a while, he uses like neck muscles to look up and be like, "You're doing something wrong." <laughs> and eventually, he'll just um turn back into cat mode and just get mad that you're not doing something right. But anyway, it was just such a goofy position. He was like melting, melting uh, down, <laughs> down my like stair step legs a little bit. Just a cute kitty. I like him. Yeah, so, um, man, overseas, if you guys are, or, and, Australia peeps, you're moving into spring. That's got to feel nice. I thought we were getting some fall, but uh, definitely jumped back to back to some heat, that's for sure. All right, I'm moving on uh, to these little French knot guys here, and I'm just taking a look here. I mean, I'm kind of looking at the cover, but um, we have the, the little guide here. So all of these little French knots are pink, so I'm just going to bop around to these guys, um, to the pink. I wonder if I should, I'm, I think I'll go, instead of like jumping all the way over to the next one, you know, making big leaps, you know, like from here to here or something, I think if I go a big leap, I, I will tuck it underneath the threads here just so I don't have like a toe catcher, um, which, you know, that's what we've been calling them, where we have a, just a big jump from one spot to another where something could get caught. I mean, I'm not really going to use this for anything but hanging on the wall, so I don't know. I mean, like, it's not going to matter um, so much, but, you know, I think it looks nice. So I will, I will tuck under a little bit. I think I might have enough to start these wings, so I kind of want to end up here so I can jump over to make the wing. So I wonder what the best way to do that is. I think I'll go one, two, three, and then I'll jump back over here. Nah. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. So I'll go here, two, three, four, five, six, and then come back here. So like right here, I'm gonna just tuck under some of the threads to get to the next one. So those threads will kind of hold it down. Oh, that's nice. Hey, Patty. Ooh, rainy in Alaska. What's the temperature like there right now? You must be, you must be uh, getting chilly end of summer stuff too. Gosh, I was really, really surprised though when I got out of the car today. I could not believe it was um, 88 degrees. It just hit you when you got out of the car too, like 88 and humid was not expecting that anymore. I thought we'd uh, be kind of low 70s, high 60s now for a while. All right, now I'm gonna jump over here by just kind of tucking underneath all these stitches. Oh, 50 to 60. See, that's that's what it was kind of by us, and then, then it got crazy again. Ugh, we opened all our windows when we got home, but now it got too hot even for that, so we, uh, we turned the air back on. Oh, it would be, yeah, it would be totally fun to, uh, to spend some time in Alaska. My brother was in Alaska for a while, a few years ago, and, ugh, he's, this is the one that, that made the quilt. Um, he just takes really good photos, and, ugh, just so beautiful checking all that stuff out. That would be fun. I'd actually like to go to Iceland again. That's, that's one of the, my favorite places that, that I've visited. Oh, do that not slower for you. Okay, Terry, so here is the French knot again. I will actually even get way down lower. So let's review the French knot. So I'm gonna apologize in advance if I hit the, the screen here, but hopefully I don't. So first of all, I always kind of like having a flat surface to lay 
my um, work on when I'm doing a French knot because it's hard, it's hard to hold it and do it at the same time. So I always come up on one side of the dot. I don't always come up right in the middle. And the reason is that I don't want to go back into the same hole. If you go in the same hole, you risk pulling your knot to the back. So I start on one side and I end up on the other. So I'm kind of crossing over the dot. So I, I always kind of start on the lower right is my typical way of doing it. So I am holding it with my, my left hand and uh, I am then going to point uh, my hand with the needle, uh, kind of like I'm making a loop here. So I'm pointing the needle away from the fabric. So this is towards it, I'm pointing away and I have, I'm holding this little, uh, like, you know, I don't know, two inch bit right here. So pointing away, I'm going to wrap around twice. So you can go either direction, I think. I, I always start from the top. So I'm going twice. So one, two, you can kind of see the two bits right there. I'm still holding it with my left hand. And now I'm going to hold those two loops there. All right, at that point I can let go because this hand is holding it now. So holding these loops, I am now gonna point my needle towards the fabric and I'm still holding these loops. Now at this point, I'm gonna go in the upper left hand corner. So I'm not going in the same hole. I'm going a couple threads away and I'm gonna put my needle in like halfway and then I'm gonna let go. So my needle's in halfway. Um, I'm not pulling it all the way through yet. Oh, and I'm totally losing my thread here. So hold on. Hold on, I'm losing my thread. That's a problem. Let's thread my needle again. Ah. Okay, there we go. Anyway, let's pretend that didn't happen. All right, so now my needle's in halfway, and at that point, I can pull those loops twice or tight. So there we go. Pulling that thread that I was holding earlier with this hand, pulling them tight so they're tight against the needle and the fabric there. So now I am going to hold it with my thumb. I don't want those loops to get away from me, so I'm just placing my thumb on here. I'm not like pressing hard or anything. I'm just, uh, I just don't want them to move. So just so I can feel it just a little bit. And at this point now, I'm gonna pull the needle through. So, all right, I'm grabbing the needle from the back there and I'm pulling slowly, there we go through the loops and then slowly pulling the thread through until, you know, holding those loops down until the thread is all the way through. And there we go. That is our little French knot. So that is the French knot, and I think we have a pile more of those coming up, so I can go over that again as well. I think we just kind of recently, there's three things that you could be doing wrong with your French knot, and uh, um, I bet you if you're having trouble, you're doing one of these things. So one was going into the same hole. Remember, we, we were a couple threads over when we put the needle back in to the fabric. Um, going in the same hole, sometimes you could pull it all the way through the fabric and pull your knot to the back of the fabric. So there's that mistake. Um, you don't want to put it in the same hole. The second mistake is pointing the needle towards the fabric instead of away from the fabric when you wrap around those two loops. If you point it towards, you won't end up with a knot. You'll end up with like a tiny stitch. It'll almost look, you know, almost like this, like a tiny stitch. Um, and that's because it's just not making a knot. You have to have the, the thread away from you. And then the, the third thing is not holding um, those loops down with your thumb. If you, if, you, um, if you just pull the thread through and let the loops dangle, um, you risk ending up with um, two giant loops being held down by a smaller loop. So they just kind of look a little messy. And that can be with um, just uh, holding it with your finger. I think that kind of takes care of things a little bit. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on. I am not sure I'm going to have enough thread to finish these butterfly wings, but let's, let's just give it a start. 
We should add to the sampler number of strings for size and that that would be fun. Yeah, we could do we could definitely do that. Just add, you know, we could actually do that. Ooh, hold on. While it's still in the hoop here, like I could just put a little French knot at the end of each of these. Um, so you can get a sense of the size. I mean, really, it'll it'll probably be very similar to the thickness here, but um, that's a good idea. It'd actually be fun to do a pile of these for different stitches. Like this is just um, this is back stitch. I did back stitch for this entire thing. Even all all of the text is is back stitch. It'd be fun to try like a chain stitch or um, you know even a satin stitch. That'd be really fun. Do a whole pile of these. I really love how this turned out with the six. So this floss is six strands, and then the thickness guide word that is just one strand. But look, look how contrasty it is. Like this is just big, and you can see all the shadows and and everything. And then this is just nice and just delicate right against the fabric. I don't know. It's just fun. But yeah, the knots. Doing the knots are different with different size thread, that'd be a fun little experiment. All right, let's see how far I get on these wings. I'm pretty positive I'm not gonna have enough thread. So sad. So this, uh, this pattern has three stitches. I mean, obviously with all of these patterns, you can, um, you can do whatever stitch you want, but this is, um, we got our back stitch. I typically do back stitch for all my outlines. I just think it's really cute. I like that you can see each stitch there. It's like a little, little beads in a row almost. Um, some other stitches like the split stitch, for example, is another good way to outline a stitch, but you don't see each stitch. It just looks like one solid line, which is that if that's what you're going for, that's awesome. It's really beautiful. However, Sometimes I just love seeing these little like beads. To me, it feels super stitchy, like embroidery-ish. <laughs> so I think that's that's why backstitch is my go-to um, outlining um, stitch. But then we have the lazy daisy stitch or basically a single chain stitch. So just one of these little bloops is basically a single chain stitch. And when you combine a pile of single chain stitches, you know, around a circle, then it's typically called a lazy daisy stitch, you know? So they're kind of interchangeable, but technically it is a single chain stitch. And then when it's around the, a circle, then it's the lazy daisy. So all of these little leafy guys are single chain stitches. In the instructions, I just call it a lazy daisy stitch though. Um, and then we have the French little French knots. So this has three stitches, three different stitches. Oh, it's here. That's exciting. Oh, for fun. I am so happy to hear that. Terry says that, that I'm teaching her and she's teaching her grand granddaughter. So that's, that's super exciting. All right, I am gonna work really hard to try and get, oh God, I, I barely enough thread. So I'm gonna try and uh, preserve my thread. So I'm gonna do like, I'm gonna kind of do a little weird back stitch here. So it's not quite a back stitch. Um, it'll look like it though, and it'll preserve the thread a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go forward here and then do a back stitch. And then I'm gonna go forward again, so I gotta come up in this hole where the back stitch was and go forward. And now I'm gonna do another back stitch. So you see it's a little, this is a little goofy. Not quite a whole pile of back stitches, so I'm not, now I'm gonna go forward again. So this is kind of a variation on a back stitch that you could do. It does preserve your thread a little bit because you're not using you're not using as much on the back. Um, I don't always feel like it makes the most 
pretty consistent stitches. So I, when I can, I um, try and do just the normal back stitch where I'm always going, you know, forward a couple stitches or like, you know, forward a stitch length and then, then stitching the stitch backwards, you know, like this, and then going forward one more time and then stitching backwards. I, I typically try and do that just because I think the stitches are nicer, but sometimes like at the end of a row like this, since it's hard to come up uh, and not like split that other threads, then at that point, sometimes I will do the back stitch and then a forward stitch and then another back stitch and a forward stitch. Um, or if I have barely any thread and I'm trying to make, preserve it a little bit more because it does use a hairless thread, then I will try and do that. But there we go. So by doing that, I managed to get a hair more out of that floss and I'll weave it in here. Some people do that all the time for their for their back stitch. They do one backwards and then one forward, backwards then forward. Um, I just like going backwards all the time. It does use more floss, but yeah, it, I think it just looks, all, of, all my stitches look more consistent to each other though. Is that three times? I think so. All right, Whew. barely enough thread there. Okay, what now? Let's see, I think, I think we should continue this green. I think we should just like keep going however far the green will last. Because what I want to do is I think, oh, I was thinking, oh man, I could weave in, for the word make, I could weave in the pink, that's, it's, it's pink floss there. I could weave in the uh, pink thread into the back and then stitch, but I'm noticing that I don't have much of a jump here. Maybe I'll stitch in the, the back of these stitches and then stitch the word forward, which, you know, would feel better. So I don't know. I think I can do that right now. Let's, let's, uh, I have another piece of pink ready to go. I'm going to weave into the backs of these stitches and then jump to this spot here and get this word make done. Then, then we're, um, totally done with the pink. Woo! That'd be good to be in that position. So, all right, I'm going to put these threads together. They look like they got a little funny. Oops. So let's just pull the threads all the way down. All right, we're even again. Even enough. Okay. Yeah, let's get that word done. Then all we have left is the cute little green and we'll finish that up, up tomorrow. Pretty easy, I think. Oh, right. Okay, weaving in the backs of those stitches right there so I can jump to that make. I'll just I'll trim those threads. I'm kind of ending up on the wrong side, so we'll we'll go down one more time here. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to jump from here to uh, this make. So let's flip it around. There we go. And sometimes, actually, I'm doing a back stitch again, but I'm actually starting with a forward stitch. I'm just starting at the end of the row, and then doing that first forward stitch, and now I'm going to start the back stitch, and I'll do the back stitch for the rest of it here. Unless, again, I, I almost run out of floss, and then I'll, then I'll start doing that forward plus back stitch situation again, but typically, like I said, I like sticking to just this back stitch. Yay, we're getting the word done! I wasn't sure we'd get to the word tonight. I think it's cute, this little M. So sometimes with calligraphy, like the down, like some of these big long edges will um, be a little thicker. You could make it thicker uh, by just stitching another line of back stitches right next to it. And you know what? We've been talking about doing like a recipe, stitching out a favorite recipe and stuff. I still do want to do that project. Um, 
maybe I'll try and put a plan together for that again to do that um, this winter. That would be pretty fun. What color are the other French knots? Oh, all of these, all of the French knots that are in the flowers are are green. So we will hit all those French knots probably at the end. We'll probably we'll probably finish up this. So we'll go around here and then end up with the little French knots. I think that'll. If I'm thinking about my game plan, I think that's what we'll do. Oh, Bonnie, no, he did not take the sewing machine. Um, I think he has pretty limited space and time, but uh, it, it's around yet. So he he might be driving through here in a couple of weeks. So maybe maybe he'll he'll take it yet. We'll see. Oh, but that was one of the things that we did when we when um, John and I were home this weekend visiting my parents this weekend. Uh, we took um, my brother took some really cool photos of. His quilt hanging up, we went like into the woods and hung like a little twine from a couple different trees and then he he uh he uh clothesline um clothesline what are those little clothesline cliffs? What the heck are them they called? Oh my god. Can't even remember what they're called. But just like the clips that you hang up your clothes with, oh my gosh, whatever. Um uh, but he took a pile of those and um Clipped it, clipped the quilt to clothespins. That's what they're called, Ugh, clothespins. So he took the clothespins and um, oh, thanks you guys. Jeez, it must be late. Vocabulary is one of the first things to go when it's when it's late here. Uh, math first, and vocabulary comes pretty close behind. But yeah, so he hung it up with a pile of clothespins on on the twine, and. Um, it just looks so cool in the woods, and he put a little campfire behind it, and it, it, ugh, it was neat. So, oh, we even, um, oh, you call them pegs in Australia. So we do have the peg kind, too. I suppose I'd call those, well, we still call them clothespins. Um, he used the little ones with a little spring in. Oh, you use those for everything? It actually looked really cute. I, I would definitely consider using those to hang, um, hang quilts. Again, it was just really cute. You know, a lot of times you try and sometimes you put like a little um, sleeve behind the quilt and then put a dowel through or something. But seriously, just just a couple of those um, clothespins holding it up on some um, wire or rope or twine or whatever looked just really cute. So um, that was fun. It was fun uh, just seeing those. Oh, and we <laughs> uh, we have like a little tiny drone. Uh, we had gotten one for my dad a couple years ago, or let, or I don't know. Yeah, it must be a couple years ago for Christmas. And you know, they make these drones that are only this big. They're literally this big, and they still they can shoot video and photos. They're kind of freaking amazing. Uh, but my husband just got one for a photo shoot that he um, just did. And my brother actually helped on that. I was talking about that a little bit last week, but he got a drone for that. So uh, when we were home there playing with the drones a lot and he got some really cool photos of the, of the quilt in the woods with the drone too. <laughs> uh, kind of an over the top uh, quilt, quilt photo shoot. I'll have to find, uh, my phone's charging right now, so I, I don't have access to my phone, but I'll have to find some photos and, and uh, share them with you guys. But yeah, that was fun. Oh, and man, it was just a perfect fall weather. I mean, it was actually pretty gloomy one of the days, but gloomy in a way that ugh, the air was just crisp and ugh, just beautiful. Fall is coming! Except for today. Today it's 88 degrees and muggy. So today is summer, but <laughs> uh, hopefully it's fall again soon.
All right, you guys, I, I am getting pretty low on this pink thread. I am getting a little nervous about finishing these letters. Oh, I might have just enough here. I'm hoping I have just enough. I'm gonna get these little diagonal guys on this K. And I'll jump back to the stick part. Oh, maybe I'll just do, do the, meh, I don't know. Doesn't matter so much. We'll keep going with the uh, diagonals. I like, um, the reason I'm doing the diagonals here is I like when my stitches hide, like, where it hits a line. So now I can do, like, the next back stitch for this straight piece, and it'll cover up, it'll cover up, like, where, where those two crossbars met. See? So this stitch kind of cleaned up that a little bit, so that's... That's why I did those crossbars first. Oh my gosh, your days are summer nights are winter. Oh, that's a big, that's a big uh, temperature shift. Yeah, we were watching, we watched the Packer game when we were back in Wisconsin and, um, and I was just thinking during it that, oh my gosh, it's like, it looks so nice out there. And I was thinking, you know, it could be like mid eighties there. So a football season can go from like mid eighties, hot, muggy summer, all the way to like negative 20 degrees. <sighs> Isn't that crazy? Like that is just such a big temperature shift for one season of sports, I feel like. Ugh. Yuck. Can't imagine playing football. First of all, can't, not like playing football, but, um, but just in that type of weather shift outside, boo. How did I get from the K to the E? I don't remember either. All right, I'm just looking at the back to kind of see. So it looked like I, all right, I finished, I just went, I, I finished this stitch and then I just jumped over and I think I started with this crossbar here. So I did this crossbar, then this crossbar, then this crossbar, and then now I'm stitching up and I got one more stitch. So that's, that's how I jumped um, from one to the other. I just kind of ended up at the top, so I started at the top thing here. That's, that's how. That's it! Yay! Alright, weaving in those ends. Oh, Pauline, you're from Wisconsin! So I'm sure you were watching the Packer game. It was funny, we, uh, we actually, oh gosh, I'm gonna say Tebow it, but we didn't actually Tebow it. It was, you know, I don't know, however you, you record TV these days. Um, we recorded it, and because we were spending time, you know, out out shooting um, photos of Jared's quilt and hanging outside and stuff. So we recorded the Packer game, which is very dangerous. <laughs> that means you can't check your phone. You can't uh, have a radio on nearby. You can't um, turn the radio on in your car because you risk um, seeing the score, right? <laughs> um, so we were super diligent about all that. And then even, you know, it's scary turning the TV on right before you r rewind and hit play or whatever, because you might see the score. But um, so we watched the whole game and like fast forward and we fast forwarded through all the commercials and everything. And oh my gosh, I don't think I've ever seen a football game like that. It went so fast. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a good way to watch football. <laughs> all right, you guys, make is done. It's so cute. Let's see if we can get a strand of green done tonight as well. So I'm gonna grab, I want, I'm gonna start up here and we're gonna just head down this way. So let's grab three strands. Yeah, right now it's Packer season and Brewer season still, so big sports situations. In, I suppose everywhere, but my husband and I don't watch sports. <laughs> like we don't, we don't care. I mean, you know, I don't know. 
this is gonna hurt me by saying this, I'm sure, but like, I feel like Wisconsin fans are way better than, uh, way more into it than, um, Minnesota fans anyway, so we just, you know, in Minnesota here, we just are like, meh. <laughs> I grew up with uh, all the Wisconsin teams, so I gotta stay true to that, right? And, you know, like I said, we never really watch sports, so we only watch it when we're at my parents' house. But it's a big deal there, getting it all, uh, getting it all figured out. It's, it's fun. I, like, I, I have a fun time watching, watching it and stuff, but I, you know, don't get all crazy about it. But it's fun. It's one of the fun things we do when we uh, go home. All right, I'm going to start up here. Weave in the ends. Ugh, I'm weaving in the ends really close to the hoop, which is not always easy. Sometimes I gotta go in and out a couple times like this. One more. There we go, and then back the other way. Okay, so let's um, grab that, step that. Oh, that is definitely something I want to do. So, um, you know, I've, I've talked about this before, and I, I know I was hoping to plan this as a project, but maybe I'll still try and get that together. Like, that would be a fun project to do close to the holidays, I think. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, Ooh, Grace, I'm not sure. I think that would be pushing the edge of when Jared would be there still. I think he might, that might be his last week, his last week there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not positive. And actually, I think he's trying to figure that out yet, too. Uh, but yeah, so I am hoping to do a, uh, an embroidery project where we take you know, like a recipe, like a, a favorite recipe, because, you know, my mom has my grandma's recipes written out, like, in her hand, and, ugh, that would just be neat. So I would love to try doing that. And, you know, if you're, I'm just thinking about it out loud, like, using one strand of floss might be a really great, um, great way to do that just with one little strand of floss. Or you could blow, I, like I like the idea of enlarging it. Um, enlarging like a small handwritten thing to like really big and then making it like a wall piece. I think that would be really fun to do too. Oh, someone posted somewhere where they did their grandma's recipe as a wallpaper on the kitchen wall. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, so that would be like an example if we glued up large. So that, that would maybe be fun. Maybe we try both out. Um, Yeah, that would be fun. We could do like a little kit for it or something too to make transferring the design easy or, or um, some fabric or... We'll see. I think that might be a, a fun kind of getting towards holiday project, like maybe a fun um, early November project or something. I will, I'm totally, totally making this up as I say it out loud here, but... Uh, that, that might be fun, like an early November situation. I will, uh, I will think about that a little bit tomorrow. But I know we've been, we've been meaning to do that for a while. Uh, that like stitching type and doing a recipe and, um, I just haven't gotten it all together. Ooh, I feel something goofy happening here. Okay, so because I have my left hand back here, I can see, I can feel when things go wrong, and it looks like I've, I've pulled my thread through, and I've kind of split the, the thread here, which is fine, but I just need to hold it, hold it down a little bit, and hopefully I don't get tied in a knot. There we go. We are fine. Felt a little funny there. All right, flip that over. I know 
know, so many ideas, so little time, exactly, and they all take forever. And you know, I I I love doing these quilts. I mean, sometimes like I've just been on like a quilt, like a marathon for a little while. Like my interest has just been there for a little bit. But oh man, quilts just take so long. They're just one of those work on a little bit by a little bit and divide it into a smaller project sort of situation um, that, you know, they just take a long time. But I love everything that I'm learning, like with the Splendid Sampler too. Like I'm, I'm super excited about the quilt as you go, for sure. I can totally see using that again. Um, but yeah, it just takes a long time. Whereas some of these embroidery projects, they are just nice and quick and and sweet, and I just like them. Ooh, a craft apron. Noline, that sounds amazing. I've been thinking about aprons a lot lately, actually, because I like using them in the, in the warehouse there. I have this little apron that, that's not like, it's just like a waist apron, and ugh, I should find a, a nice pattern, and you know, that would be actually kind of cute, like an apron with a recipe stitched onto it. That would be kind of fun. I just like the idea of like a little wall hanging with the embroidered recipe that you can just see all the time and you can actually like make the recipe. I love that idea. Oh no, you, you've lost oh, some Splendid Sampler 2 blocks. Oh, I hope they show up, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> That's, that's a bummer. Well, if you end up having to make them again, I'm sure they'll pop up someday and you can uh, put in the quilt. That's like my brother's quilt. Uh, my mom had some random extra like log cabin style blocks that she had made and just, just like one, like she must've just had one left over or something that were just hanging out forever. And he actually, he actually sewed those into the quilt too. So it was actually, you know, they got used and they, they have like a special purpose now in, in his, his quilt. So I'm sure they'll get used at some time. Oh, Pamela, that is a great idea. She says she has a spiral notebook that she writes all her ideas and then everything she learns too. I think that's the like, that's a really interesting part of it. Because I think we all... You know, we have to-do lists and we we get cracking on those, but we don't always, you know, celebrate the wins. And learning new things, at least in my mind, is a total win. Oh, shoot. I just, my finger got stuck on my uh, thread here and I pulled out here. Let's thread, thread it again. There we go. So that's a great idea. I like that. Oh, Nolene, that sounds so pretty. That would be kind of fun. Maybe we can, um, well, I don't know. I still like the idea of a wall hanging, but it would be fun to, like, maybe maybe we can sew up a cute apron pattern and have a, uh, recipe stitched onto it. But actually, I, you know, I, I like the idea of some sort of wall hanging or something that we can hang up because, I don't know, it feels more precious maybe than an apron that you would wash all the time. But I do really like that idea. We can make your notebook cover for ideas from, from the book. That would be fun. Yes, that is another project I still want to do, and um, I'm just, that one, I'm in the middle of writing a pattern for, and it's a little tricky. So that, the, the sketchbook cover is from my book, uh, my Sew and Stitch Embroidery book. However, I'm updating it. So it exists out there. It, it's, it's in my book, but I'm updating the pattern a little bit so that you can use any size sketchbook you want. Like, I think that that's just gonna be fun. So you could, you know, use it for like a big 
binder or, you know, a bigger sketchbook or a small sketchbook or a little book, whatever thickness or thinness or whatever. So I'm, I'm, I'm updating the pattern with, so it's kind of cool. So you, you just kind of like plug in your measurements of what your book is. And then you'll, by that, um, I'll tell you, like I have instructions on how to figure out what to cut your fabric as and all that. So I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of working on that. Um, so that just has to get done. Yeah, and a kit too. Um, I actually have the stuff for the kit already. I just have to finish this dang uh, writing the pattern for it. Oh, no, Eileen, that sounds awesome. I'm going to have to look that up. All right, you guys, that is done with the green floss. And uh, um, I think we'll... I have one more um, three strand of embroidery floss ready to go, but I don't think we'll do that tonight because it's getting pretty late already. Um, so we will pick this up tomorrow. I think we're going to get this done tomorrow. All we have is this little bit left, which is about the amount that we just did. And then just all the little French knots. So I think this will be um, easy peasy. We actually might have enough time to finish this too. So um, we'll maybe finish it in the same way that we we finished this embroidery hoop. I just I think it's just kind of a sweet, pretty way to finish an embroidery hoop. And I like seeing the backs of the stitches yet. So it's a nice, just cute way. So I think if I'm just estimating time, looking at this, we might have enough time to finish it up like that. And then we have um, have the cute little bow to attach to it as well. So I think we can finish it up to that point, which is totally done. And uh, yeah. One more day. So I guess this is about, you know, a little shy of a three hour project and I'm chit chatting and um, taking my time too. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it a Monday. All right. Hello. Hello. And here is how far we got. I'm actually going to probably take it out of the hoop just because I like it to lay flat when I'm not working on it just so things don't um, get too set the the um, little folds and stuff around the hoop. I like it to just relax a little bit. Um, so cool. We'll do another day of embroidery tomorrow. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me here again this Monday and I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies so you can watch the replay there. Uh, take a look at how we did those French knots again if you want and uh, I'll be here tomorrow night at 8 30 p.m. Central again. Thanks so much. Have a great evening you guys. Good night.